Hello and welcome to Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Mark Gillen of the 128th Legislative District in Berks and Lancaster Counties. Our local law enforcement officials have sworn to serve and protect our communities, but their jobs are made easier when residents partner with them. Crime Alert Berks County was founded in 1998 with the mission of encouraging citizens to provide tips to law enforcement that could lead to solving crimes and arresting criminals. Joining me today is the founder and immediate past president of Crime Alert, Barry Rohrbach. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Barry, you're a legend in Berks County. I know you didn't want me to start the program uh, that way, but when Barry Rohrbach picks the phone up, people answer and they know they're going to be called to volunteerism. What inspires you to be a volunteer, Barry? Well, first of all, I was a policeman many years ago in Pottstown for about three years until I started my banking career. Very active in the community in Pottstown at that time. And then when I come up to uh, Berks County uh, with Why Missing Federal, um, I got involved uh, in, in doing things in Berks County. And one of the things that I'm very proud of is the fact that um, uh, many of the police departments did not have um, um, uh, bulletproof. bulletproof vest. Right. And uh, being uh, from Pottstown area, I found out that somebody was uh, uh, shot in Pottstown and a bulletproof vest saved their life. And uh, I thought, gee, that was, and I was president of Qantas at that time. And I thought, well, that's some kind of a program that we ought to have here in Berks County. And when I found out that uh, a lot of the police departments did not have a budget that, uh, mm. that had uh, bulletproof uh, vest, so I asked the board uh, about starting this program, and our goal was to raise $100,000 uh, um, to start mm -hmm. uh, to buy the bulletproof vest. Well, fortunately, in six weeks, we raised $140,000, and we were able to uh, <clears throat> supply all the police departments in Berks County, and, um, and that was the end of the program. But they come back later on, and of course, at that time, bulletproof vests were form-fitting. So if somebody left the police department or retired, they took them with them. So uh, the Police Chiefs Association come back to me and asked if we would um, uh, start this program again. And what we did, we gave them $40,000 that was left out of, out of the program. And, uh, but today I can say that most of the departments now have their own programs, and a lot of them are uh, <clears throat> uh, paid for by the uh, federal government. And then a um, uh, few years later, as, as I said, when I was up in Berks County, um, I attended a breakfast uh, one morning, my wife and I, Catholic breakfast, and uh, the uh, speaker was um, <clears throat> uh, Rick Periandi, who was a lieutenant colonel of the uh, Pennsylvania State Police. And he, of course, was from Berks County. And he said, it's a shame that we don't have a um, Crime Stoppers program in Berks County. Well, for some reason, I got a call on Monday to come over to uh, the barracks, State Police Barracks. And they asked me if I would start this program. And I said, well, I don't know anything about it. However, I think it's needed. So we started August 1, 1998, uh, with no money at that time, and we had no arrest. But my uh, duty then was to start a, um, a board. And the first uh, person I started was, um, uh, was he was, a, he was one, our first vice president, Ron Dunkelberger, who's with me this morning. And then I recruited another person, um, uh, uh, he could not serve on our board because he does police work. Anybody that serves on a crime alert board uh, cannot be active in doing police work. Right. So I, I, I went to my other good friend uh, uh, who is with us today, is the police chief of uh, Wymissing uh, uh, Police Department, 
and that's uh, Jeff, uh, uh, who's with us uh, this morning, Jeff right. Beal. And uh, so uh, it didn't take long for us to, uh, the, the first money we got was $5,000 from one of the local banks there. And um, I, I guess the success of our program was the news media, uh, the Reading Eagle, uh, the Channel 69, and of course, WU. And of course, the citizens of uh, Berks County, the businesses, and of course, uh, a number of years, about nine years ago, there was a murder up there with uh, Gary Redner. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, we got involved with that. And uh, that's been one of our um, main uh, force of our income each year. Our budget is $175,000. And I'm proud to say that nobody on our board uh, gets paid for what we do. Our success of the program uh, our our payout is a success of the program. Right. Can, can I ask you a question about sure. the program? Sure. All right. Somebody picks up the newspaper. They turn on the TV news. They see an image. Can you help identify this person? Whatever it happens to be, they're an eyewitness to criminal activity. What's the starting point as well as the ending point? Take us on the timeline of somebody becomes aware of criminal activity. They report it. They submit a tip. Okay, um, we, we start with the uh, newspaper and then the television station and, of course, the radio station, Crime of the Week. That starts it. And that crime is in the newspaper. In fact, um, one Sunday morning I got the newspaper of a, of a so-called criminal, uh, and I forget the, the crime at that time, but I got a call late in the afternoon that that crime was solved. That's the quickest we've ever solved a crime. But what happens is there's two ways. Uh, the first way we started was, of course, call our crime alert number, our 800 number. Uh, about two years ago, we started another program because in this day and age, you're able to use your uh, cell phone now. And we call the tips in that way. And um, we get uh, approximately, um, well, combined with the both of them, we get over 100 tips a month. They're not all successful, but for instance, if you would call in a tip, you, you saw the uh, picture of somebody, crime of the week, and you'd call and you'd say, you know, I know that person. That person's in the same apartment building that I am. So, okay, we give, we give you a number, one, two, three, and we tell you. Now, you, you keep that number and you watch the news media or listen to it on the newspaper or um, call us back. And uh, when we are successful with the tip and you call us, then we make arrangements to uh, get that money to you. We pay in cash. And um, they have to sign for the money, but you and I know that nobody's going to sign the right name. So I might, if it were me, I'd probably put in there uh, Mickey Mantle, for instance. And, I, and I'm old, so I can go back to my uh, my speak? days with Mick, Man, uh, Mickey Mantle was was a top player with the Yankees. You used to be a great ball player too, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I played at it, you know, yeah. but uh, yeah, I, I love sports, no doubt about it. But the thing that I get out of this thing is the the, the people that we've met in, in this business. Uh, not only our board, we have a board of 42 members. We have an advisory board of about uh, 35 members. And this is what makes up what we do here. They're the ones that do the work, and I get all the credit for it. Comparing <clears throat> us in Berks County to the rest of the state, where does this crime alert program Well, stand? that's interesting um, because when we started, we were 28th in the state. And today, I just found out, I guess a week or so ago, that they're down to 12. We've been number one in the state the last 14 years in money paid out to uh, uh, tipsters. And nobody uh, that I know of, I don't know of anybody that we ever paid uh, the money to. It's an anonymous uh, program. And I, I think that's why it's so successful. But the, but the problem is today, there's only so many police 
in Berks County. I live in Kamru Township. We have 25 uh, policemen in Potsdam do a great job. But there's not enough of them. And that's why our program is so successful. You have all those extra eyes and ears out there reporting what they see. That's right. And you have 25 police officers spread over uh, conceivably two or three shifts. Right. You know, seven days a week, somebody's off on vacation. You absolutely need the citizens. So let's translate this. We have a crime alert Berks County program, right. number one in the state for 14 years. How does that affect life in our communities, the streets? Well, it affects the police department because if Chief Beal, uh, Chief Beal was here talking to you, he'd say, you know, we can't be everywhere. Mm -hmm. So that when we get a, a, a tip and arrest is made, that saves us a lot of money. We, uh, Chief would say, we have detectives and they're paid to get go out there and find out who, who uh, did that criminal act. That's where we come in. We get the calls. Uh, one of my good friends in the state police uh, many years ago told me that a municipality probably saves about $50,000 uh, in solving a, a crime in their uh, municipality. Now, <clears throat> you mentioned bulletproof <clears throat> vests at, yes. at the beginning of the program. It's hard for the average person to imagine there was a time that police didn't comprehensively, all of them have bulletproof vests. How far do we go back when you were providing the bulletproof vests? What, what period of time approximately was that? Well, when I started in, um, uh, in police work, it was um, around 1949. And we did not bulletproof vests then. But when I started the program in, um, well, a number of years ago, mm -hmm. probably 25 years ago or what have you, uh, those bulletproof vests cost $200 in. I understand that today they're, they're about $1,000. Extraordinary. And the reason for that is that the bulletproof vests years ago, uh, they could take the ammunition back in those days. Today, with the ammunition and the weapons they have today, they would not take that. That's why they cost so much now, and that's why they're, uh, they're so high in price. Back in 1949, I don't know if you can recall, were you carrying a 32, 38 revolver? <laughs> I think it was a 38. Okay. But I had to give it back when I, <laughs> when I retired to go into my banking career at that time. You were also in the service, the United yes. States military. Could yes. you rewind for a few moments and uh, share with our audience how yes. that dovetail with what you're doing now? Uh, I was in the Korean War. Uh, I was in from, I went right out of high school uh, uh, from uh, uh, 1951. I, I went in uh, the Air Force in October of uh, 1951. I was in until 1955, and I spent uh, three years in... Um, in England. And one of the things, I always wanted to be an air policeman. And that was my goal uh, uh, to serve as a policeman in, in the Air Force. Well, at that time, they, uh, uh, they gave you a booklet. And you had to look in the book. There, there was numbers in the book and all these different colors. Well, I couldn't read those, uh, those numbers. And therefore, I wasn't accepted. However, I did get a very good job uh, in the Air Force, and uh, I was in charge of, um, of uh, all the commercial transportation that came on, on the base and so forth. And one of the things I didn't like is when some of our um, airmen were, were killed, I had to, had to get their remains together and send back to the uh, United States. But the Air Force, I always said that was my college. And um, uh, I think I learned how to uh, go out and get a job and serve. And I think last year I was, um, I was privileged to get a breakfast in my honor that put on by um, my boss at Security Guards, Guido Bikini, who's well known in Berks County, sure. his wife. And um, I remember saying, um, that night, I was uh, on guard duty, and that was during the morning. And we had B-29s at the base then. 
and I'm out there all by myself. And I said, I said to God, I said, you know, uh, when I get out of the Air Force, uh, there has to be a job for me someplace. And, uh, but if I get a job, I'm going to work hard to do it, but I'm also going to work for the community. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> I think that's why I, I'm so involved in the community, because I've gotten so much in my life. Now I want to give back to the community. Sure. So uh, that was really a seminal moment uh, for you as you reflect was. back on the, on the early 50s. And that's not an unfamiliar story for those that have put the uniform on um, and, and served their country. A little bit of a rabbit trail, but the country was certainly a different place, and the Korean War was an unusual yes. conflict. Some call it the uh, the Forgotten War. Um, have you shared that brief story and aside with others um, relative to that seminal time in your life? Yeah, and uh, and you know, I I go up to the VA up in well, why I'm missing in Lebanon, mm -hmm. and I probably wouldn't be here today if it w was not for the VA. Uh, uh, they do a tremendous job uh, for, uh, and you know, uh, and, and of course my wife goes with me a lot. And we see a lot of people up there with their limbs gone and so mm -hmm. forth. And uh, and uh, uh, I would just hope that uh, we keep having the VA so that it can serve the people that served us and kept us uh, safe for many, many years. But uh, it's... it's um, it's something that I, I will never forget, mm. and uh, and I I do everything I can, as I say, to uh, promote the, the VA. And, and as a member of the Veterans Affairs Committee and the State House of Representatives, that's certainly an enduring interest uh, of ours. Another personal note: Jenny uh, is here with us today, and uh, yes. how did you land that catch? Well, it wasn't easy, but uh, <laughs> but I, I I guess that's one of my lucky things in life. And uh, I wouldn't be able to do the things I do if it weren't for her. And uh, they always say, uh, behind a good man, there's always a, a good wife. And, and I, I, I just can't say enough, enough about her because uh, sometimes I get, uh, you know, sort of uh, upset about things and so forth. And, uh, and she gives me a good talking to. And, uh, <laughs> and, and unfortunately, you know, you, you think about it and you say, you know what, you know, a wife is supposed to be a wife but not on you all the time. But you know, the more I think about it, it's the best thing that, that can happen to a man to have a good wife like I have. Yeah, I think all of us need a good stern talking to. But every speaking now and about then. the Veterans Affairs, I know you do a lot of things, and I know that you are the uh, person up in Berks County that got the Veterans uh, Museum started. What a, what a great thing. And uh, I, I think, you know, we have 17,000 veterans in Berks County. And uh, as you know, you asked me to be part of that, and I said I would. And I, I said to you, if every veteran in Berks County, 17,000, gave $25, now, they can't all afford to do that. However, uh, my dad was in the uh, Navy during the Second World War. I would buy a, a, a membership for him. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who would do, do the same thing. And the other idea, of course, we talked about is selling the bricks. Because I know we have to build an addition on there because, you know, people like me at my age can't go up the steps like I used to. So it's nice if we could build a new building, put an elevator in there. You know, you, you mentioned your dad being in the Second World War, and of course yes. that's something that we have in common. My dad w was uh, in the South Pacific. Um, you have taken on a number of large challenges in life, uh, none larger than crime alert Burks. You talked about a couple seminal moments in your life, but we were raised uh, by members of the greatest generation. Yes. What was it that your dad, your mom, um, that World War II veteran instilled in you that you carry with you today? It's a tough question. Well, my mother, uh, my mother was a, um, a good worker. She, my mother worked for many years in a dress shop. And uh, my dad, when he came out of the Navy, he started uh, his own business. 
he started a um, gas station and, and doing automobile work on Perkingham Avenue in Reading. Mm. Well, the unfortunate thing back in those days, you had the gas pumps, and every time you, he was working on a car, um, he had to stop and pump the gas. So uh, he decided that he wanted to get a garage. So a person who's, a, I think, an icon in, the, in Berks County, uh, he had a, um, he had a uh, garage on Peach Street in Reading. And that was a time when you had uh, uh, markets on mm -hmm. Penn Street and so forth. So my dad got, uh, they traded places. Bill Arner was, was his name. And of mm -hmm. course, you know, Bill Arner started uh, many restaurants in Berks County, right. very successful, and uh, Abe Lincoln Hotel and what have you. So my dad uh, had a business for many, many years and uh, until he um, got older and sold the business. But I think the work ethic there uh, back in those days, because when, when I went to um, school, I got a job with Miller's Ice Cream and Candy, which was located in, in Reading, had many stores and so forth. And I worked there uh, many hours and still went to school. Mm. And, uh, but, I think that's that's Berks County. The work ethic in Berks County has sure. always been great. <clears throat> that, that, that's spot on. Do folks walk up to you today in a restaurant or street situation in the community and greet you and say, Barry, hey, thanks, I appreciate what you're doing. You made a difference in my life. And how gratifying is it for you to hear that? Uh, very much. And I, and I think, you know, getting back to the being a veteran, sometimes I wear my... Uh, veteran hat, the Korean hat, and I don't know how many people come up to me and shake my hand and thank me for my service and so forth. But you know, getting back to uh, my um, uh, childhood and things like that, uh, when, I, when I grew up, got out of high school and what have you, and um, started a, a job and what have you, I got an as I said, I, I was a policeman, and then I went into the banking business. I started as a teller, no college degree or anything else, but I worked myself up there at that uh, savings and loan in Pottstown to a vice president, and then I was then brought up to Wyoming Missing to take over that office and became president of the bank, which today is, is called Sandander Bank. So to go from a teller with no college degree to president of the bank, I don't think I could do that today uh, because of today's element of work and so forth. So I'm very proud of that. Where's Crime Alert going to be 10 years from now in the future? What's it look like? Well, that's a good question because we have a new president now, and of course that president, Rick Perry Andy, who got me involved in this thing, uh, uh, as I said, at the breakfast. and. Uh, uh, the reason I retired is, is mainly because uh, I don't know that I could have done any more for Crime Alert uh, at this time. You know, we're very, uh, our, our bottom line is very good. Uh, we're number one in the state, and I don't know if anybody else is going to overtake <laughs> us. But I thought it was time for me to move on, still stay on the board. But um, to, um, <clears throat> to turn it over to uh, Rick Perry Andy for new ideas and so forth. And where do we go in the future? I, I don't know. Hopefully it's going to be a lot better than we, we did in 19 years. Well, you've, but, you've um, built a very large, solid, firm foundation. And so you said you're moving on. We don't accept that. Uh, you just moved over alongside uh, others. And so we need you. Um, your influence is significant, and uh, I'm very confident and I, and, I th and I think the honor that I got from the board when I retired is uh, many years ago we started a, uh, uh, some awards. It started with a President's Award and then Law Enforcement Award, and of course Chief Beal was one of those recipients. And uh, the, the President's Award, Ron Dunkelberger, he, he received that. And then of course the uh, the community award, which we've given to Redners and people like that. But uh, last year when they had 
my breakfast. Uh, the President's Award, of course, was given to me. And this year, we're going to have uh, another breakfast at the Crown Plaza mm -hmm. on uh, April the 18th. And we're going to, to give the reward, uh, the award to uh, uh, Pam and uh, uh, Peter. Peter Barbie. Right. And they renamed the President's Award the Barry E. Rohrbach President's Award. Wow. What an honor. <laughs> and um, uh, I didn't get into this thing to get to the awards. But, you know, like you say, when I walk in uh, a business or a store or whatever, they, they look at me and say, oh, I saw you on television. Well, you were in the newspaper. Or I go to church and so forth. And like I said, crime alert was not a household name 20 years ago, no. but it is today. And, uh, and I think the fact that uh, I always say, it's probably the best kept secret in Berks County, but I don't think anymore. We've got about two minutes to go. I find Berks County to be a very unusual place, strong sense of community, though we've got 400,000 people, very homogenous in its community institutions, its civic organizations. Is that your observation? I agree, yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, t uh, for instance, Reading. Reading isn't like it used to be. You know, we all remember Reading at the Christmas time. You know, from 2nd and Penn to 11th and Penn, all the stores. And, you know, you couldn't hardly walk on the sidewalks uh, because there were so many people. But it's not like that anymore. It's different. And it's changed. Just like cell phones and iPads and computers and so forth. And uh, you better get with it or they're going to pass you by. <laughs> so. a, a few seconds on cell phones. Um, how has that technology changed Crime Alert and the reporting? I would think you're getting a lot more tips as oh, a yeah. consequence. We get more tips now than we do by telephone. And, uh, and, uh, and I think that, uh, and of course we advertise it a lot, you know, and, uh, and I think uh, I think, like I said, when there's a, there's a crime in, in um, Reading, for instance, and a lot of people gather around, what we come up with an idea years ago is we come up with a um, business card, and the police hand those out because the people that are there, they don't want to talk to police. Mm -hmm. but the, the information is on the card, so what people can do then is go leave, go back in their apartment, their home, or whatever, and then then use our cell phone and call and give the information. We have yeah. just a few seconds uh, left. Is there any individuals or businesses you'd like to particularly shout out to and been supportive in an enduring way? Well, you know, there, there's so many. You know, the, the commissioners of Berks County mm -hmm. have been so, so good to us. Uh, Renners, of course. Um, uh, you. Uh, you have been great to uh, Senator Schwank has been mm -hmm. been great a friend uh, John uh, Adams certainly. John, oh John Adams he he gives us a, a check every year <laughs> and then we make a presentation to the uh, commissioners and uh, and then we always arrange it that John gives us a check that day but uh, you know when they had and you know he always says he takes this money away from the bad guys and gives it to the good guys I like which it is, which is us and I, I always say this, um, I've been around many years. I've never known a better district attorney than, than what we have. He's a, and, he's a good uh, one. And like I said, the success of our program is because of our board, our advisory board, the citizens in Berks County, and the people that support us every year. Couldn't ask for anything better. Thanks, my friend. Thank Great. you. I appreciate you being Thank here. You. I'm State Representative Mark Gillen. If you have any questions about what we've discussed today, feel free to contact me at my local office or through my website. That information will be shown in a moment. Thanks for watching, and please join me next time for Legislative Report.